What's up YouTube? Southern Comic Geek coming to you with another huge haul video. That's right, I'm out of town this week if you haven't figured it out from the backdrop. But I did manage to get to a comic shop or two or three. Surprise, surprise, right? But if you want to see what I picked up uh, yesterday and today, stay tuned for the video. So before we get into seeing all this comic goodness, go ahead and smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and the bell notification so that when videos like this drop ever so randomly, you were one of the first people to know and can make the conscious decision as to whether or not to watch it now or later, but as long as you watch it, we appreciate you. And so that's right, had to go out of town for the old jobby job, and uh, you know, got to make the best of it, right? So get by a couple of comic shops. So uh, first off, yesterday... I got by uh, my LCS and picked up some new Comic Book Day goodies. So let's talk about that. Uh, first off, we got Rorschach. Decided to go with this cover. Um, it's an interesting read. I, I think it's a, a maxi series, or maybe it's just a mini series, but um, kind of an interesting read, interesting take on um, these people that think that they're Rorschach. Um, Tom King usually does pretty good for short-lived stories like this, and so I'm in. We'll see how long or how well it continues to go. I keep telling myself that I'm going to quit getting The Walking Dead, but week after uh, week, not literally, but you know, you get the picture. Uh, I get these killer David Finch covers. Been liking the story, and it's like, okay, I'll get it again. So it's pretty good. Um, not spoiling anything unless you're like me and we're not on The Walking Dead when it first originally came out. But um, his uh, wife finds out he's pre she's pregnant. I'm wondering if it is going to be from him or from the guy that uh, was just killed in the previous issue. Uh, X-Force 16. So X-Force remains a solid title in the X line. I think Hellions probably takes uh, the top uh, list for that. Uh, you know, usually it's fairly action based. Uh, this is Namor shows up in the end, basically says, "Get out of my uh, my uh, lair," and uh, they get lost after battling this you know squid like creature. Um, it's just I don't think it really. Maybe some little nugget that was in here gets used on further down the road, but it was largely non uh, consequential issue. Once and Future 15. So this, I've been kind of waning on Once and Future. I uh, feel like it's just kind of one of those series that would have been better to be a miniseries. Uh, I think it went so well that they continued it to make it an uh, ongoing series. Um, so uh, art's still killer. Uh, story's still good. Uh, this one kind of picked the pace back up a little bit, so I'm still on board. Um, but yeah, kind of on the fence right now. Uh, the next Batman. I know largely I pan the whole future state idea, but I did give Batman a try. I liked the mini stories that were in there. Um, the main story was okay too. Uh, and even, surprisingly enough, Dark Detective, which is the Bruce Wayne side, I like those as well. So this is a pretty solid read. Basically, um, you know, it's it's just uh, essentially an Elseworlds or a what if story as to, you know, if uh, uh, Mr. Fox here uh, becomes Batman at some point in the future and all this bad stuff's gone down. So I do not like the $7.99 price point. Uh, one can make the argument that you are getting more book. Uh, and therefore resulting in a more price, but I don't know if I'm getting that much more book, if that makes sense. So Cable 7 uh, has uh, been had been delayed quite a long time. I'm not sure what exactly the reason was. If you do off top of your head, leave it in the comments down below, but it got delayed uh, because it's supposed to have done been out. If you look at the little, keep up the little chart of how you should read the uh, X books or when they're coming out. Um, 
Phil Noto on the art, Jerry Dungan on the work. I'm not a huge uh, Kid Cable fan. Having said that, you know, notice I'm still at uh, issue seven and I'm still on board with it. It's an interesting little take. Um, Cable finds out why, who's kidnapping these babies, who's behind it, and if you haven't guessed it, Strife's behind it. Um, spoiler, uh, but anyhow, Strife is behind it, so he still has five of the ten kids. He's really wanting to go uh, head, you know, back to uh, try to find those kids and where they're at. So he, at the end, team wants to team up with Domino, which is very Cable-esque, if you will. Um, the interesting thing about Kid Cable, or at least since they've kind of put these things together, and I know in the late 90s when Cyclops was thought to be dead and Cable was actually an X-Man, uh, he had much more of a family dynamic with Jean Grey, even though technically she's not his mother. Um, but he had much more of a family dynamic. But I, And there was some of that with... Uh, Rachel Summers, which is his sister from another timeline, but also she's Ascani, so she's really, you know, the clan founder. She's the one that rescued him as a baby. Uh, all different diverging timelines, uh, but still a sister nevertheless. Uh, and so um, the whole fa Summers family dynamic, uh, they really explore that more. Uh, since he's a kid now, Cyclops. Uh, really takes more of that fatherly type role, which is very interesting. Um, I don't uh, know how long they're going to continue it. I would think that at some point um, that they were going to um, move Cable. I thought a great avenue to do it would be when they, if they would have sent Cable to the vault with X-23, which they're supposed to find out what happened to X-23, Sink, and um, Darwin when they went to the vault because the vault they age differently and to me that would be a good thing that her him and X-23 could go he comes back old she comes back normal because well they have a healing factor right um, but they didn't pursue that maybe they will in the future I don't know uh, but they kind of teased the first issue that there's cable but then that kind of largely got dropped with Ten of Swords coming about I don't know if it's going to finally come back, uh, but you know, story's fair. fair. Uh, Power Rangers number three, and so uh, Lord Draken uh, double crosses the space vampires. He turns on them. He's kind of getting into the uh, Yellow Ranger's head that uh, he can be trusted, uh, and then they show up at uh, this world at the end of the book. Uh, of the two Power Ranger series, this is uh, the one that's more interesting to me. It uh, has three of the original Rangers, but I like the, the dynamic with Lord Draken, and uh, it's off-world, so it's kind of got a Space Odyssey type feel to it. So I'm going to keep on picking up at least uh, that issue there. Uh, Maestro, War and Pax, or War and Peace, uh, if you will. Uh, always dug the Dale Keown uh, art and uh, Peter David's story. I uh, you got this cover because Del Keown uh, uh, art inside is not drawn by him however the art was a little uh, to be desired just me personally uh, but the story was okay so I'm, I'm, I'm on board I was kind of with Maestro on the last uh, series it's kind of like eh, until it got to that last issue and I'm like okay this is kind of cool so I'm still in for it uh, as long as it doesn't go too terribly long Iron Fist and the Heart of the Dragon, number one. So Larry Hama's on the story here. Uh, you got the dynamic of Luke Cage being in, in the storyline, which I always like the, the, the camaraderie or the working uh, deal with uh, him and Luke Cage. Um, the, basically, somebody is trying to find all these different dragons. Luke Cage and Pirate, uh, Iron Fist, rather, has to uh, stop them. And uh, Larry Hama's usually a good, uh, pretty good storyteller. Uh, art on the in inside was just kind of okay. Uh, but, you know, I'll pick up the uh, next few issues and see what it's like. American Ronin from AWA Upshot. So, uh, basically, this guy uh, is able to take on the traits or the memories and stuff with uh, DNA or blood or whatever from somebody else. Um, I read the first two stories. 
I picked up three, and this is four. I have not read them. I was waiting for five so I could just read it all the way through. felt like it might be one of those stories that's better read that way. Uh, but uh, So I'll pick up five and, and see what it's like and kind of go from there. TMNT 113. So uh, this is the albino turtle whose name escapes me right now. I think it's uh, another, the first full appearance of Toka and Razor in continuity, as it were. Uh, the Team and T story, I, so I am 13 issues behind now because uh, I read issue 100 uh, up to, you know, 100 Splinter Dies. Uh, from the vibes I've been getting from it were not really good, but I've been picking up, normally I'd pick up the Kevin Eastman one. They did not have that one. Um, so, <clears throat> been picking that up and uh, so I've got 13 issues I probably could catch up really fairly easy uh, see if it's something I want to continue to pick up or not deceased dead planet I uh, usually get the movie color so I got this one this is the birds of prey homage um, and so you know it was a very interesting story it ended uh, this is the last issue and uh, several more people died but uh, other people lived and well, it was a, a good ending. It's one of those stories that they didn't push it past where it needed to be, which I thought, like Dark Knight's death metal, I thought that was largely what they did. They pushed the story uh, out way past uh, what they needed to go, uh, just to sell a few more issues. Got some... Uh, <clears throat> okay, so I got these at... Uh, so I went to a shop yesterday in Tupelo, Mississippi called Bratz Comics. If you're ever in Tupelo, go check out Bratz Comics. They got a wide selection there. Um, I bought several big books from them. I got my um, Uncanny X-Men 95 from them. Uh, took it straight to get signed by Chris Claremont sent in. Came back 85 CGC white pages. Um, that could have been easy in 992 had I got pressed, but you live and learn. Uh, I'll just leave it alone now. But um, but anyways, uh, I bought my first book, Havoc, there. I bought uh, Uncanny X-Men 5, which is the first uh, mention that Namor is a mutant. So I bought several big books there before, and I bought several loads of books, which is what I got from there yesterday. They had a, a Werewolf by Night 33, second appearance of uh, Moon Knight. And uh, so Werewolf by Night, uh, 33, that's the one I need. I've got 32, 37, first and third. I need the second one to complete the trilogy, so uh, so to speak. Uh, and they wanted way too much for it. I said, well, that's fine. It's your book. You can sell them for what you want to. The owners were not there. They were relaying the information. I don't really think that they saw um, the, the book condition uh, as it really were. Um, and so, hey. Hope they get it from somebody, somewhere. Just not me. But uh, I did pick up some other stuff from them. Batman 281. So working on those 280s Batman and 200s overall yesterday. Uh, got 284. Um, and most of these were three to five bucks. So not bad at all. 285. 288. Then I got a little Detective Comics number two, annual, annual number two, uh, Batman Fighting the Klan. How can you go wrong with Batman Fighting the Klan? It's gotta, it's gotta be so cool. So this is a newsstand, which is not a big deal because it's in 1989. Uh, what was interesting, I didn't realize it until I got in the car and started to put it in CLZ, that it had a Walmart sticker. You know how Walmart used to have stickers on everything. Uh, before everything was totally done by barcode and I almost left it on there just to nostalgia sake I did take it off which you can kind of see the residue it's not a real big book and super high grade or nothing so I'm not really worried about it uh, it does have Mark Wade on here and I think Mark Wade's supposed to be at Huntsville which is where I'm at now at the time of this recording uh, at the Comic Con in April I don't know that I'll have to find that out but um, I know he was supposed to be at the one uh, when this one was last year and most of those people got rescheduled so we'll see I might get him to sign that one if he is that and then that could become a big deal with the residue 
uh, filling in the uh, detective runs from Rebirth side, 967. These were all $3 a piece, 945. 941, 938, and then this one I think I paid $20 for this, Marvel Premiere 21, which I think is the first appearance of someone whose name escapes me right now, but if you know, leave a comment down below. Uh, but it was it uh, it was worth it. I was like, dang, I can't believe they only went twenty bucks. And it was crazy. This was out there in the boxes for twenty bucks in better shape than that Werewolf by Night, which was behind the counter, and it went four hundred dollars for what may be a six. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, now these other things are superpowers uh, comics. So if you remember the eighties um, toy line of superpowers. Uh, you had all the DC uh, folks in that. And I did not know this, so shout out to Lady Fantastic for informing me uh, with that comic knowledge that she has that Jack Kirby drew these. Uh, so I picked up a couple from her initially, and then so I put it in the CLZ app because that's one of those things you just don't find. I wasn't going to go online and buy them. I didn't want them that bad, but I put them on the CLZ app so that when I'm randomly searching through comic bins, that this was something that I'd be looking for and found these for three dollars a piece so this is um, from 1985 uh, superpowers that's issue one and they had several of these series so I'm not sure if that was volume one or volume two but Kirby did almost every one of these uh, this is issue six and so I actually have the whole first two volumes this is the third volume issue one um, Kirby did not do these, uh, Infantino did, but um, cool nevertheless, and uh, missing one in that volume there. Uh, but yep, yeah, so superpowers number five, number four, number two of that run, and then this is number two of this run. So yeah, you can tell it's Kirby there. So pretty cool. So I picked up all of those and uh, moved on uh, over. And uh, after I done the obligatory work low today, I went over to Creamer and Cash Comics, who went from Ardmore, Alabama, uh, to here in Huntsville. <clears throat> went by our shop. Didn't pick up any comics there. But I did pick up some toys, which I'm going to do in a separate video, um, and I'll show you what I picked up. So pretty cool pickup there. Fearful that it's another rabbit hole, but nevertheless, picked it up from there at Creamer Cash Comics. Then I went over to The Deep, and uh, The Deep is the bigger store in Huntsville. Uh, Rock and Robbie Billups from, um, what you go to on YouTube. Uh, it was actually there and uh, got a moment to speak with him and um, so yeah so had my uh, CLZ app out and picked up a couple things off the hit list and then started diving in some bins I didn't even get through all the bins I was running out of time wanted to get over to the next comic shop and then back to the hotel for some other work stuff but my goodness found some gems found some gems on the cheap uh, some of these would be for sale uh, I mean let me just, yeah let me just sort those out so this was pretty cool detective comics number three new stir so that's pretty cool a new stamp from detective comics in 2012 news 2012 newsstand Wow must have been in a Walmart pack or something. Uh, I found a bunch of these. I just couldn't pass it up. Chromium, uh, Exo Goodness, it's a dollar. Couldn't pass it up. Ninjak 24. So Ninjak 24 was the last issue I needed in that volume one run of Ninjak to complete my set. So now the circle is complete. Uh, funny thing was, I was looking in the regular deals and found Ninjak. It was $2.50. I said, yeah, okay, I'm picking it up. But then 
I went and started digging in the loan boxes and found it for a dollar. So we got that copy instead. Wolverine 25. Um, this is from the second full run of Wolverine. Uh, 144. Uh, this is, uh, I already have this, but I think this one's in a little bit better shape. And this one is a new stand uh, from the late 90s. So probably trade that out. I'm um, not sure if I'm going to sell that or um, if it's in better shape than the one I currently have, but it was a dollar. Walt Simonson, X Men, Claremont Goodness. So I decided to pick it up. Found this uh, XO half for a dollar. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have the certificate of authenticity for whatever that's worth. Uh, but it, uh, interestingly enough, I paid a lot more for mine. I don't know that that certificate's worth that much. Uh, I paid a lot more for mine than a dollar. Got to get some Tura goodness. You see that? You see Stevie B. Do you see that goodness right there? There you go. Um, and picked up this Nat Rat, the Dark Nat Returns. So you know uh, a parody spoof uh, homage of Dark Knight Returns, and that cool cover there. Might be some homages. Uh, another Exo Man of War. I'm not really collecting these, but it's like for a buck. Uh, Batman Family number 16. And number 13. Qui-Gon Jinn number 1 from the Age of the Republic one shots they were doing. I don't know what made this Turok worth less than the others, but it was 25 cents. So there you go. Also picked up some more of my detective runs, and if I'm not mistaken, I actually now have all of Volume Three Detective, uh, which is the current run. So uh, 970, 969, and for those of you who did not know, Tanyan was actually writing this stuff. This is uh, the uh, Justice League homage, so 968. So Justice League got released in 2017. Tinyan was on Detective at that time. So this was Tinyan before Tinyan was cool, okay? And before everybody hyped up on his Batman run, he was already writing some Batman goodness over in Detective. Uh, this is 966. 965, and I've actually read this story. I think I got the ebook for it, e-graphic novel, uh, on Kindle for it. 944. And you see, pay three bucks for these. Nine forty-three. I think he gave me uh, ten percent off because I had bought so much. Nine forty-two. Nine forty. Nine thirty-seven. Nine thirty-four. Might be a second. Oh, is this? Yep, second print. I was wondering why that was an orange color, and it just dawned on me when when I was showing it to you. Yeah, and it says second printing right here. I was only able to find a few Batman that uh, I did not have in those low, those high, depends on the way you're looking at it, the late 200s issues. Uh, but this is 275, Batman being chased down by motorcycles. And then 274. So pretty cool there, pretty cool, pretty cool, but do say what say myself, but hey, you might not think so, and everybody's entitled to their opinion, so if you don't think so, or if you do think so, well, let me know in the comments down below. Now, <clears throat> this is Team 7, um, uh, Wildstorm Rising Prologue, uh, but the reason why I got it was Barry Windsor Smith. I think there's some cards in there, uh, but yeah, this is um, this image. Uh, then Wild Storm Rising. This is Chapter One. It's a Barry Windsor Smith cover there, and then this is Issue Two. And I did not see his trademark BWS signature on it, but it seems like it folds out. Might be on that end, but I said I, I'm almost positive that's him because it looks just like his art. Then we got uh, Wildcats 42, 48, 49, 
Solar, Man of the Atom 28 from the old Gold Key. By then it was Whitman uh, doing those, but uh, nevertheless, found that in a dollar bin. Wow. Found this in the dollar bin. Uh, Star Wars Obsession from Dark Horse Clone Wars, man. This is one of those covers. I can't help it. Wildcats number two. That was a buck. There's some more of them. Shadow Man Zero. <laughs> really cool. Chromium Bob Hall wraparound cover. Yeah, I got some more of those. And uh, uh, that's probably why he really gave me discount, to be honest with you. He's like, thank you for taking all those off my hands. Uh, got another XO right here. Yeah, I was finding all kinds of goodies in there. Uh, Valeria the Shebat number two. So this is their Windjammer title, Acclaims Windjammer title, which was uh, properties owned by the creators. In this case, it's Neil Adams. So found some Milestone comics. Another Shadow Man Zero. Another Milestone comics. And you don't, I don't find these out in the wild very often, but the Acclaim comics, and especially this title, Trinity Angels, so... Um, man, there's no telling what all goodies I would have found if I had kept digging. But uh, yeah, Trinity Angels number three. Another Tura. Or two. Another Trinity Angels number 12. And number 11. Then I got Grifter one, which I, I like Grifter, but uh, also Barry Windsor Smith goodness there. Wildcats 44. Geomancer number one. Yeah, another chromium cover. Oh, look, another Turok cover. <laughs> oh, look, another Exo cover. <laughs> and another Exo cover. That's right. Plenty of Exo goodness to spread the wealth of all. Now, um, so when the Jim Shooter got kicked out of Marvel. He went and started his own company, Valiant. When he got kicked out of Valiant, he went and started Defiant. Defiant went defunct. Uh, and then he went and started Broadway, which didn't take very long to go defunct. So uh, you don't see, I don't anyway. I mean, if you do, you see them all the time, let me know. But uh, I just don't see no Broadway comics very often. And so I found a couple, and that's one of them, Shadow State, number one. And then this is Shadow State uh, number five. I was like, what? When do you see these? And it was funny is I found this, Dark Dom uh, Dominion 10, and I found um, the other day some Defiant comics. Again, uh, we just don't see them all that often. Now I'm going to see if it says it in here. So Dave Cochran inked this okay so Dave Cochran uh, X-Men uh, goodness uh, and Lynn Wing wrote it so Lynn Wing obviously another X-Men deal uh, but issue four of Dark Dominion was done by uh, I'll think about his name in, in just a minute but uh, oh boy, the guy that did uh, early Spider-Man and what was aggravating is they put this sticker straight on the comic because they're like nobody wants this crap anyway so I'm just gonna put it on there and just ruin it for somebody so I'm wondering do I just hold on to it as it were do I try to tear it off what do I do I have to think about that good guy Steve Gitko that's who I couldn't think of uh, the good guys number five another defiant comic Wolverine 96, which so that was the annual for that year. Red Ronin's Rage. Well, that hardware uh, from Milestone Comics. News 10. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> this is the poor man's ASM 129. Then I found Captain J uh, Johnner and the Aliens number two, a late Valiant comic. 
Don't see that as often. Um, Wolverine 60. So I've seen this. I've kind of toyed with getting it, and they're kind of just whatever. Uh, <clears throat> didn't want to pay a lot for it, so I found it today for a buck. Some embossed goodness. I think you actually had to send off for this to the uh, World Wildlife uh, Fund uh, to get these. And so this is a story how they're trying to save the planet. Um, so it was a buck. Wildcats 49. And 46. Totally for the cover. Wetworks number 8. Little Barry Windsor Smith there. Wildcats 27. <clears throat> so I'm going to sell these, but I just thought it was interesting. These Dazzlers uh, <laughs> from 1981. Uh, she's fighting the Hulk on roller skates, no less. <laughs> Dazzler, she was bad mama John. She took on Hulk. <laughs> Notice here she took on Galactus. Notice here she took on... Uh, Terax, look at that, on roller skates. That girl don't play. And then she's making out with Angel right here on this one. I mean, what is a girl gonna do? Uh, then we've got Wildcats 43. So I'm sitting here getting these Wildcats and uh, I sold probably the ones that I needed to complete that set. But hey, um, he, he wanted it more than I did. So, uh, finally just Call it quits for the day at um, uh, the deep and decided to go over to the Haven. Uh, so that is where uh, Nick from Two Brothers uh, Comic Shops, and uh, you hear about Josh on their channel quite often. Uh, and so that's his shop there. And so went in there, looked around for a while, just blah, blah, blah. And, just really not seeing anything that was jumping out at me. And I already spent a whole bunch of money anyway. And so I uh, looked up there on his wall, and there was this book right here. Uh, Marvel Superheroes number 12, uh, first appearance of Captain Marvel. The Captain Marvel, by the way. I'm just saying. Just saying. The Captain Marvel that actually died a hero and stayed dead. That Captain Marvel... Uh, his first appearance in Marvel Superheroes. I have Captain Marvel number one. I did not have his first appearance. I've got the, I don't know if it's called a True Believers or if it's just a total facsimile, but either way, I've got the that copy of that. But now I've got the original copy, four or five. That's okay. One, one I was wanting to spend a lot of money on to get, you know, a super high grade, and I was uh, comfortable with this. So uh, with the price that he had on it, I was like, eh, it's really not want to pay that for it you know give me a give me a, a sweetheart deal so the guy was like him hauling around like he didn't want to call josh or something like josh was gonna get on to him how dare you call and ask me if i want to take less for a book or you know, like dude all he can do is tell you no can you tell him or no all right so he calls him up josh is like yeah i'll do that for for that price i was like cool so while i'm standing there waiting for josh to call him back i see this in the case and i'm like oh ooh, ooh, what's that what's that and um, this is definitely a very cool book. And of course, you're sitting there going, right, Bloodshot Rising Spirit. It's a valiant book. Of course it's cool. But you don't notice what it is about that book that makes it cool. This is a glass book. Um, there's not very many of them made. Valiant was the first uh, chromium cover. They were also the first glass cover. Um, so this is one of them. There is one other one that I'm aware of uh, that's a um, Fallen World. It's got rye. It's red instead of this white for Bloodshot, which is really cool. And I've been, I'm watching it on eBay. I'm tempted. Um, this is a 1 and 250 variant. Uh, they're glass. Uh, I know CBCS does not grade these. I'm pretty sure CGC probably doesn't either, and it's understandable why, because when you go to the encapsulation process, they drop it, it's cracked, you know. Plus, if they grade on cover, wouldn't all these be tens? I guess in theory, you could have one that uh, on the back side of the cover, you might have some color rub or something. 
but uh, in theory, but uh, but yeah, so uh, really cool uh, book, and uh, so there you go. Bloodshot Rising Spirit. Well, this thing's heavy too, but it's it's a glass cover. Uh, so. I, uh, he was on the phone with Josh when uh, I said, hey, can you ask him about this one too? Jo I said, I don't know what's a fair price. I'm looking at this other one on eBay. That's not the same book, but it's one like it. And uh, this is what it's going for, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so he uh, said, well, hey, I'll do this much for it. Okay, great. Let's get it. So picked that up. So didn't pick up quite as much from... Uh, Josh and them, but I certainly paid more uh, at uh, his shop as opposed to the other ones just with these two books. And so I was glad to add them to the PC. I actually see a little crack on the side of this. So I've got to be really careful as not to let that thing spread. Uh, but yeah, really cool uh, book. And I'm not sure how I'm going. I've got to do something besides this little dingy bag. I don't know if I put it in Mylar probably put it somebody it's not got a back cover other than an advertisement but maybe i put it in one of those clear backing boards if y'all got an idea of how i can display it to keep it but keep it safe at the same time let me know in the comments down below but I definitely want to be careful with that probably just as careful or more careful than you are with a silver age book just from the standpoint of how much uh, more likely you are to uh, chip it crack it and there's no going back you know you can't press anything with that thing out so uh there is that but tell me what you think about this haul it's a massive haul folks and um not sure when this video is going to drop so i won't give away any secrets that you might say well that's not really a secret because you've already done this and this video got released before that other one sorry about any confusion but uh with the schedule and everything it's a lot easier just to do these videos um random and release them periodically uh, like that <clears throat> but uh, be sure before you get out of here to smash that like button and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so when videos like this do drop you don't miss anything uh, we're going to be announcing pretty soon uh, the next giveaway for the channel milestones uh, so be sure to hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of that. Also, check me out on Instagram if you haven't already, and uh, that way you don't miss anything there because whenever videos post here, I also notify people on Instagram just in case the bell notification doesn't do its job or you miss it, you know, that kind of thing. And as always, I do appreciate everybody for watching me. And until next time, keep reading and keep collecting. Adios.